It's truly an honor to invite on stage Mr. T. Koshi, CEO ONDC. I'll request all of you to kindly join me in welcoming the gentleman on the dais with a humongous round of applause. Good afternoon and thank you to all of you for giving me this opportunity to be here and do some pitching to all of you about this new initiative that we are doing as Open Network for Digital Commerce. I'm sure um, most of you who are having very um, major involvement in the field of commerce, especially in the field of digital commerce, would have already uh, come across this word Open Network Digital Commerce. And some of you may be aware a little bit about us, because we are also a startup, just few months old. And, um, and a startup that has never been attempted anywhere in the world as a very unique initiative happening in India. So I'm not going to uh, explain in detail how ONDC work. I'm, you know, in a short time, I think it'll be terribly boring for you. And if anybody of you are not so familiar with how it works, uh, I will uh, request that you just log into ondc.org. There's a nice eight minutes video. I mean, it won't take too much of time uh, to sort of nicely explain what we are attempting. So what I'll do in the next 10 minutes is to sort of throw out some ideas to you as the entrepreneurs, especially who are taking very um, um, exciting positions in the digital world uh, by uh, establishing your own channel for the direct consumer access. Um, today, if you look at the world of digital, I mean, digital commerce, these are mostly the domain of wall gardens. Uh, there are few large, and anywhere in the world, not just in India, anywhere in the world, and in any domain. It could be consumer goods, it could be food, it could be mobility, it could be um, hospitality, everywhere. You have few large enterprises who have a stranglehold on the buyers and sellers. If you are a seller in a physical world, you have the complete freedom as a brand manager to choose your advertising, your promotions, your discounts, and everything. And you also have the access to the, the data about who is buying and so on and so forth. Whereas if in the digital world, that option is very, very limited. There are few large players who have a stranglehold on very large, probably 80, 90% of the market. And there are a lot of small players who are trying to establish. And somebody say that I don't want to be a part of this show. I'm going to, I mean, going to establish my own portals, my own website, my own app, or whatever it calls. And I'm, and it's going to be a very expensive and very challenging journey because customer acquisition in wall gardens are not is not easy. It comes with a lot of effort and a lot of cost. So that's why we in India decided an idea of democratizing commerce which would mean that every seller should have the equal opportunity to make their products and their catalogs visible in an open network at their terms and consummate an order, fulfill the order, collect the money at their terms and also have the whole information about their transactions, their clients with them and not being at the mercy of some large intermediaries in this whole journey. This becomes even more critical for smaller bis brands or businesses. Because imagine, like I would do the same thing if I were establishing a large wall garden. What is my choice is that I would like to see few large brands who will give me significant amount of uh, revenue as their agent if I can push their products to my captive clients. And, the f and if I can shape my consumers through a variety of means to believe that the products that I tell them to buy is what is good for them, not what they think is good for them. So it's not a choice of the buyer, it's a job buyer is being shaped. Whereas the brand manager would like to come and say that I would like to come and present my case, my product, my ben and the benefits of my product to this larger audience, everybody equally, and get acceptance 
based on what I offer, not based on any other enticement somebody else is giving or so on, so on, so on and so forth. And you understand what it means in the real world that you guys are in this business. So that's a whole idea. So that is what democratization of commerce is attempting to do. So what I'm, like I said, lots of information available, look at how it works. And every Tuesday, we, my colleague, chief business officer, runs a, a business briefing in the afternoon uh, you know, to help people like you to go in deeper and take a decision of how and when to participate. Um, um, if you send a mail to even my email ID, koshi at ondc.org, one of my colleagues will send you the details. So I'm not going into that. I just want to leave uh, the, some thoughts. Is that f for quite some time, our mental models are only a platform. So we can think only in platform base. So when you let those mental models to break and think an open platform, an open network, humongous possibilities come up for innovation, for specialization, and also having a better control on your own products, your own term, and your own terms of trade. So if you have a very smart product, you can make it available in the ONDC network multiple ways. Either you say that I'm going to have my own portal, my own site, my own app, where I am going to make my products available, and I'm going to make this app, portal, etc., cetera, ONDC protocol compliant. If that happens, every buyer application the ONDC network will be able to discover. Today, um, uh, if I just give you, I mean, as I told you, it's a startup, we are only a few months old, and there are already about seven, eight buying platforms. Like, they include uh, fintech companies like PhonePay, uh, which has got a brand called PINCODE in the ONDC uh, in the world, Paytm, Spice Money, some startups like, uh, and then um, AirPay, some st uh, startups like MyStore, um, you know, a number of them are there. And a number of them are almost in the verge of being launched. So I don't want to take the thunder away from some of the large firms who are almost completing their testing and making their products, their buying application available. The beauty is, independent of which buying application, every seller and every product is visible. So if all of you, the, you know, the champions of D2D uh, business, can take a call at the most inexpensive way that you are going to make your products visible in this network by making your portal ONDC protocol compliant. I'm sure that all of you are familiar with the making the UPI protocol compliant for the payment side, because that's, that's one more very well accept, accepted channel for collection of money, in addition to your cards and in addition to your banking. So similarly, this will become one more obvious channel for, for commerce. As I said, this is too early in life, so we are only building a volume. So if I just tell you the kind of progress that we saw, when we started, um, you know, uh, after testing, alpha testing, etc., when we started this network visible to the larger crowd, uh, to begin with in Bangalore, in January, if I tell you, we had about 800 merchants doing about 50 transactions a day. We had started with uh, mobility and grocery, and then we added, uh, sorry, started with grocery and food, and then we added mobility. Mobility was even still there only in two towns, Cochin and uh, Bangalore. Uh, and um, if in the last six months we saw uh, humongous adoption, even adoption between the segments were different. So if I tell you, from 50 transactions a day, we uh, do we have reached about 80 to 90,000 transactions a day. Um, with uh, mobility, the one that really went through the roof uh, on peak days, going up to 60, 70,000 transactions a day, and the retail doing peak days 30 to 40,000 transactions a day. So that's a kind of, and good days that, and bad days 20,000, 15,000, and so on and so forth. Primarily, f a lot of jump came in food. Probably all of, many of you would have seen a lot of viral stories going around and what happens on the food side and, uh, and grocery. And we have launched in the last couple of months, we have uh, enabled all the other standard product, beauty, fashion products, home decor, um, you know, people like even SSGs like Kudumbashri from Kerala uh, to Cottage Emporium in Delhi. Uh, or Wow brands, many of the brands, uh, Unilever, uh, Coke, uh, McDonald's from big brands, or even many of the startups and D2C brands, all of them have started coming in. 
In the non-hyperlocal, which is non-grocery, non-food, non-mobility area, it's only a couple of months. We have about, in the other case, we have about 50,000 merchants in the, uh, you know, the grocery and food. Um, you know, taxi drivers and auto drivers, another 50, 60,000. The merchants in the other segments is only about 1,000 to 1,500, but they're growing every day. In the last two months, we have at least two, 3,000 enterprises who have uh, registered and under various stages of integration. Um, and I believe that, uh, you know, probably in the next few months, you would see uh, all of them saying, hey, I'm also available on NDC network. The beauty is, once you make your product, or in, I mean, the portal or NDC compliant directly or through any of the selling application, you can make a statement saying that I am available at any of the ONDC product, ONDC buying application. You don't have to go and make a deal with any buying application. You don't have to go and pay any special fee to a buying application because for, it is for their incentive to go and tell their customers, boss, I'm helping you to buy what is good for you. So there's a new domain, there's a new paradigm. So I, what I would suggest is I don't want to take your time to uh, give, you know, sort of take you through the whole thinking process, but I want to just uh, <coughs> you know, leave a seed in your mind to say that how when you plan your D2C strategies, keep this in mind, the world is changing. And this is being, and this is not just for B2C, it could be B2B, it is not just product, it's got services. And the, you know, the, the, the confidence that comes from me is that I have a lot of brands from big brands like uh, Unilever's of the world um, uh, to large um, SIs like SAP, uh, uh, you know, et cetera, are all have started their journey in leveraging the ONDC network. Some of them, in fact, many of them do come and spend uh, workshops with us to see how their supply channel is going to change and how their um, uh, distribution channel is going, going to be changed. So this is just, uh, that is just the thought I want to throw at all of you to say that, uh, keep in mind that in the next few months and couple of years, uh, this transformation will explode. You would have seen such transformation in our country in the last 10, 15 years. Anything when you start, it starts small. It sort of tickle around about a few months and then a year, and then it'll, uh, hockey stick uh, growth will start. You saw in Athar, you saw in UPAI, you saw in Coven in your vaccination, but that was out of desperation, I suppose. But you saw uh, this ha happening in every field, and that's why globally India is now coming as a leader in uh, digital transformation. So with this, I would like to close uh, my uh, short uh, pitch to all of you, because you guys are all used to making pitches, because you're all entrepreneurs uh, in the early stages with the, with the confidence, excitement of the products and services that you have, and willing to go and take the risk and be in this, uh, and establish yourself for what you are, uh, and what you are worth, and what are you offering, and not for anything else. Thank you. Thank you.